So good afternoon, everybody. So indeed, it is a great pleasure for me as well as our department that today we have Professor Adi Mukti from uh, IIT Kanpur. So uh, this is our fifth distinguished talk in the uh, mathematics distinguished talk. And indeed, it is our great uh, event for our mathematics department also, very new department. So today you will be speaking on controversy on the scalar conservation laws with this discontinuous flag. Before uh, this talk, I will request Professor Kannan to say a few words about Professor Ali. I'm happy to invite Professor Ali Monti to welcome him to our midst to deliver fifth distinguished lecture in the Department of Mathematics. Sir Adi Muti is well known, he is a reputed mathematician, and many of you will be already knowing him, but still, just as a formality, I will say here yeah, a few sentences. I will read a few sentences from his, from the right of here. Professor Adi Muti has been elected as a fellow of all these three science academies in the country. He is a fellow in short. In short, he is FNA, also FNASC and FASC, three science academy fellow. He is also the Raja Ramana Fellow is also a JC Bose National Fellow. And another prestigious award that he has won is Dr. Zahir Hussain Award in 2030. He is also a Fellow of SWAS, the World Academy of Sciences. He has been associated with the TIFR Bangalore campus. Center for Applicable Mathematics. And after retiring from there, nowadays he is a visiting professor at the Department of Mathematics and Statistics at IIT Kanpur. An important problem solved by him relates to the existence in two dimensions of solution for critical exponent problems. A major hurdle in PDE is because of its non compact nature, especially in low dimensions. Professor Adi Muthi solved this problem completely in two dimensions. One thing that we should learn from such eminent persons is the breadth of knowledge. He is not working in a single area. He is he has authored more than 100 research articles and a wide range of topics, including partial differential equations, functional analysis, numerical analysis, calculus of variations, optimal control, and many others. Today, he is going to deliver a lecture on Controllability of scalar conservation laws with discontinuous flaps. I'm happy to invite you to deliver this talk. One announcement. Yeah, one announcement. Those are attending from June. So for your question, please write in the chat box. So there will be no option for uh, speaking. So Professor Adi will take care of it. I want to say one more thing. He has been associated with this institute particularly SRM Institute at Chennai for several years. He has been in the advisory board. Both of us. Yes, thank you. Thank you for the uh, introduction. I don't deserve all the things. Anyhow, thank you for uh, introducing me like this. So what I'm going to talk about is the uh, controllability because it is a new subject even to me. Okay, so the controllability was uh, basically it is a concept started in engineering electrical engineering side, and later on it got developed and went to uh, from finite dimension to yes. Yeah. So the zoom will be only. Uh, I can hear. I can stand. Okay, now I can see. 
Okay. You're allowed to participate. Oh, but can I write on the board? Yeah. You can write. I can write down here also. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. So uh, basically, the control problem is uh, something new to me, and it started by engineers in uh, 60s by uh, electrical engineers, and then went to for the linear operators. Then it went to uh, infradimensional case by the JLERs, and then we got developed. So I, I don't want to enter into the, that subject. What I'm going to talk about is that all the methods that is, uh, all the methods that it is, okay. all the methods uh, that is in used in those areas will not applicable to the one which I'm going to talk about. So let me start with uh, uh, what I'm going to talk about just now, I mean, uh, today. This is a problem posed by uh, Quran and Zawazwa. Okay, and let me, as I proceed, I'll tell you what it is about, okay? So uh, before uh, going into the, can, can you see? Okay, before going into the uh, subject, let me start with a very simple, not a simple problem, but there is a well-known problem. That is a navel stroke fixation. So what is a navel stroke fixation? We would like to know how the fluid moves as, along, as the time and uh, space varies. And uh, fluid means uh, we want to see the, that is at a very particle, there's some velocity, Okay, so, so some velocity and uh, for, uh, density and position of the uh, particle, etc. So it is governed by a system of equations called the Navier-Stokes equation. So what is the Navier-Stokes equation? Navier-Stokes equation says that suppose u is equal to denoted by u and uh, incompressible. Assume that the flow is in a like water or something, right? It is not air. Air is compressible. Water or something, right? It is a compressible uh, a fluid. So if u denotes the velocity of the particle at time t. In, uh, at, 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 uh, at uh, x and time t, then it satisfies the, the, using the Newton second law of motion, it satisfies this equation u dot gradient of u plus the pressure p is equal to some u times Laplace n of u plus the uh, force applied force with the divergence of u equal to divergence of u by definition is equal to du1 by dx1 plus du2 by dx2 plus du3 by dx3. u at x0, let us take u at 0 equal to u naught of x. This is the uh, incompressible navier stokes equation. So one would like to know how the solution looks like. So even today, it is a very big open problem in the dimension n is equal to 3, that open problem. Problem. Is that uh, show that this problem would say unique solution? Unique solution. This is an open problem. If somebody solves this, we can get uh, one million dollars. Okay, it is a one million dollar question. So I'm not going to talk about this. So they want to solve. People are interested in solving such an equation. So when you put that mu is equal to zero, what happens when mu is equal to mu is called the viscosity, viscosity of the flow, viscosity. And uh, when the viscosity is equal to zero, assume that the viscosity is very small, then there is a system of equation that is the Euler's equation. Okay, this is called the navier stokes equation. Then uh, the, when mu is equal to zero, it's called the Euler's equation. Okay, so the people are interested in what happens and uh, uh, how to solve such an equation. So the best thing is that you do, uh, scale down. So what is the scale, uh, scaling down? You go to the dimension one. In the dimension, there's no pressure, there's no divergence, is there? So the so dimension n is equal to one. Just you see that what happens is that I would like to solve this du by dt plus u dot du by dx equal to nu times the plot n of u, so, uh, nu times the d square u by dx square. Uh, your uh, use a scalar function, use a function of x comma t. X is an uh, real, real number system and t positive. And you would like to uh, look at u of x0 equal to not. You would like to solve such an equation. So this is a well-known uh, equation called Burgess equation. Okay. People started looking at this problem. Equation. People started looking at this problem. And even here, from last 40 years, there are a lot of many open problems. Many problems are solved, many problems still are open. So now when you knew is equal to zero, it is called it's called discuss Burgess equation. Discuss because mu is not equal to zero. When mu is equal to zero, it is called the Burgess equation. U by dt plus u dot u into du, du by dx equal to zero. U at x zero is equal to 
question mark. Why it is uh, very important to solve? Because you are not going to understand the three dimensional nearest of equation, but try to understand what happens here, and then hopefully you can go back and solve this uh, nearest of equation. That is the reason why people started uh, looking at it. And also, it has got a lot of from the point of uh, uh, physics, which I'm not going to talk about it. So uh, let us uh, bother about only this equation. How do you solve it? So question is that, question is that, how do you solve this? du by dt plus d by dx of, let us write down, f of u equal to zero in the, what is known as the conservation law, x, where f of u is equal to u square by. By the Leibniz formula, these two are equivalent if u is a smooth solution. If u is not a smooth solution, what happens? You started with u to be a smooth solution. Smooth solution at least a C1 function, it satisfies this equation. Therefore, all the terms make sense. But if you have u is not smooth, it is not C1. It is only uh, L density function, the residual function. Then you can talk about du by dx in the weak sense, in the sense of distribution. U is uh, well defined, but u a product of u into du by dx does not make any sense at all because the product of two distributions is not a, it is uh, not well defined. Whereas if you write down the form of uh, this this product, this is equal to this instead of this one, you write it as d by dx of u square by 2. This makes sense. That is why I am calling this a conservative form. This is called the non-conservative form. Let us start with the conservative form. So is it okay? Now the question is. So I'm uh, basically I'm interested in this one. U square by 2 is a convex function, therefore assume that f is called the con uh, flux, I mean denote the f of u is called the flux and f is convex. Assume that because whether it is u square by 2 or any convex function, we can always uh, work with it. Now the question is what is meant by a solution to this equation? So before going to the solution of this equation, let us talk about the, what is the control problem we are connected with this. Okay, okay, before that, okay, let us first give the definition of solution and then go to the control problem. So what is it? Yes, can you? So let us look for the solution. So a priori, you can, as you said, that we are looking for solutions which are not, need not be differentiable. Therefore, I want to make sense out of it. What is assume that u is a differentiable? Multiplied by, multiplied by this, by a, a smooth function and integrate by parts. So what you get is that you will get that the integral from zero to infinity, integral from r, r minus n plus r, u e by dt plus f of u dt by dx dx dt plus integral from minus n to plus infinity u naught of x p of x zero dx zero. Just multiplied by this by the smooth function p and integrate by parts. What you get is that this is the solution. If u is a solution to this problem, then u is automatically satisfactory, but conversely, it is not true. But this makes any sense, makes sense that you can allow that u to be a LHC function. So you say that u is called a weak solution to this problem, which will satisfy this for all t, the all this function t, which is a C1 function. Okay, with compact support. So this is called a, that I call this a weak solution in the R solution. So this is now the area. So question is that question is that existence of a weak solution, existence of first one, then if it exists, is it unique? Third one is if not, not. This is coming from the Burgess equation. Burgess equation represents some physical quantity. It's the velocity of this one. Whether can you put some extra? There are many solutions. So which solution you would like to uh, look for, which really represents the physics of the motion? So uh, in that case, uh, unicity is very important. If it is unique, it is fine. If it is not unique, you must look for uh, among all the solutions and look for one solution which really represents the physics of the motion. Okay. So that means that if not, you have to put an extra condition to identify that solution. That is called, yes? Okay, if not. Yeah, one, uh, existence, it is fine. Two, uh, is it unique? Uh, if not, put an extra condition. Condition, you from the physics of the motion, 
now known as the entropy condition. To uh, capture the to capture the uh, uh, solution which represents the emotion, which uh, corresponds to the physics of the motion. So these are the problems which you have come across. So assume for the timing that the existence is there. Unicity you don't know, but uh, there may be many solutions. But you can put an extra condition for which the solution is unique. Assume all these things. Now let us come to the control problem. So what is the control problem? I can erase this. Yeah, okay. No, no, no problem. The control problem is the following the control problem. Assume that the solution exists and you denote the solution. For, uh, this is a weak solution to this one. Denote the weak solution to equal to u of x t. That is a time t. This is a t x axis. This is a x axis at any point x, comma t. This is a t axis. This is x axis. So you know the value of u of x t at this point. So draw the line. At the fixed time t, draw the line. So you are given that your time t is positive, is given to time t is positive. And you are given a function, f is a function. F is some r, g is any function from r to r, where g is any function from r to r. So question is, can you find this control problem? Can you find find u not assume that everything lives there for r? I'm given that the bar. Solution initial data is equal to u not x. Initial data u not that is equal to u of x zero equal to u not x u not x. Can you find a u not such that at time t at time t the solution u of x t at time t be given to be equal to the given function. One you are fixing a time t. Can you find a data u not so that the time t it hits, uh, hits exactly uh, u g of x at the time t? This is a control problem. Okay, so this is what the engineers talk about it. This is a control problem. If g is I'll control but if, let us assume that g is any function. Then one more. Suppose you are not able to find it. Suppose you are not able to find it. Then you look for uh, if not you look for an optimal control. Yeah, optimal control is called optimal control. So that is, you look at u of x t, any solution, you so multiply, uh, the, uh, subtract by the given function g of x and take the square d of x from minus minus plus infinity. You take the difference of these two things and you minimize over all, minimize over all the initial data. Or all initial data, then you call it the minimum, or you call it infimum. Why the square integral? Because it is easy to tackle. Therefore, let us talk about the square integral function. So I'm looking for a given function g of x, subtract with the uh, known for given for the function which you obtain from the weak solution u of x t, and take the square and minimize all this integral, and you call this with the cos functional. This is called the cos functional. I will denoted by g of u naught. U naught belongs to L infinity of R. If the minimizer exists, then you call this to be the optimal control for the uh, problem. It is called the, if the minimizer exists, suppose there exists some v naught, so that g of v naught is equal to the infimum of this uh, quantity, then you say that v naught is the optimal solution. Now the question is that, how do you, go? is it possible to get, uh, uh, is, it, is it possible to solve the control problem? If it is not solvable, can you get the optimal control problem? Can you solve the optimal control problem? So here, uh, I would like to talk about what is known as the law lax for formula. First, let us start, talk about the control problem. So what is the lax formula? 
So it is way, way back in 1959. 59, I, I remember, right? Blacks and Olani, they looked at this problem. Uh, before that, it was not completely open. They looked at this problem. What is the problem? The problem consists of ut plus f of ux equal to 0. A conservation law and its initial condition u of x0 equal to u naught of x. And they would like to look for a uh, weak solution for this problem. So how do you get a weak solution for this problem? So Lax and Olenik, they looked at this problem. They transformed the problem into hamilton jacobi equation, which I'm going to write down. So what you do is that write down, uh, transform this equation ut plus f of ux equal to 0, u of x 0 equal to u naught of x, transform to the problem vt plus f of v. Now the derivative is outside. Now I'm going to put derivative inside. Okay. This is called hamilton jacobi equation. v of x 0 is equal to v naught. Okay, so you transform the, this, uh, uh, this, uh, this differential equation to so this differential equation. You are not, you are making uh, the life a little bit more, much more complicated. Even though, the, the, what happens in the case of the Berkner's equation, I would like to solve it ut plus half of ux prime equal to zero. This is the Berkner's equation, I would like to solve it. So the complication of the differential equation still remains as it is. You are not gaining anything out of it. But what is uh, gaining is that, analysis here. So what is the convex analysis? Have you heard about the convex analysis? Let us use the convex analysis. analysis. If f is any convex function, I can talk about the central dual of f, right? You know all of that. What is the central dual of f? f at p is equal to supremum of or q, qp minus f of q. This is called the central dual. It satisfies the following property that pq for any q, f of p plus f star of q, or f of plus f of q plus f star of q. This is by the definition. This is called the central dual. For a convex function, the central dual is the same as uh, and we can show that for a convex function, I can take out the uh, dual of this one. I transfer to be f double star of x. So once you use this one here, once you use this one, what happens is that this equation, this equation turns out to be equal to Vt plus supremum of P times Vx minus F star of P, P belongs to R, this is good. So this is where the convex analysis is coming to be true. So now once you have this equation, you drop the supremum, you drop the supremum, then what you get is that Vt plus Pvx minus f of p equal to zero, v of x zero equal to v naught of x. Linear equation, you can solve it. Because it is a, for fixed p, p is fixed. You can solve it. Then I would like to make the supremum becomes infimum by taking it outside. Therefore, the solution turns out to be what Lax and Romanik obtained is the following. They obtained a weak solution. They use a convex analysis to Get the weak solution. What is the weak solution which you get? Then you will define V of xp, the uh, Hamilton Jacobi equation, turns out to be equal to infimum. I like it. I So I'll write down V of xt equal to infimum. This is uh, just a convex analysis. This is uh, y belongs to R, V naught of y plus d times the convex dual of x minus y by d. If you look at this one, take the V of xt, it satisfies the equation V of x0 is equal to V naught of x. Uh, how do you define v naught of x? v naught of x is equal to 0 to x, u naught of theta. This is given, d theta. You define this functional, and you can show that v turns out to be a Lipschitz continuous function in both the variables x and t. And therefore, by Radomacher's theorem, the v, the derivatives exist for almost everywhere. And you can show that for almost everywhere, 
it satisfies this differential equation with this initial condition. And if you denote u to be equal to dv by dx, this makes sense almost in any way, then u turns out to be the weak solution for this conservation law. U turns out to be the weak solution. This is what Lax and Dolanik obtained. Okay, so uh, let me do this. Then, uh, yeah, Lax and Dolanik obtained. So, what is another important uh, uh, thing is that you obtain at any time t, at any time t, look at the solution u of xt coming from the Hamilton Jupiter equation. u of xt coming from Hamilton Jupiter equation. I would like to know how it looks like. So for any almost every point x comma t, you can define a uh, function y of x. So you define the characteristics, so you can show that the infimum becomes the minimum exists. And the all minimizers are called the characteristics. Okay. So you can write down the Vx. There exists a non-decreasing function, y of x, non-decreasing function, so that u of x t, so that u of x t, this is a half x formula, u of x is equal to f prime inverse of, because f is a convex function, y of x comma t by t. This is a uh, formula they obtain. This is called half lax, half, uh, sorry, not half, lax organic uh, formula. Is it okay? So this is what uh, they obtain. So what is the uh, relevance between the control, I plotted in the control problem, what is the relevance between the control problem and lax solenic formula? So now I would like to uh, uh, relate with this with this one. Suppose there exists a G, uh, given, given G, G of G is a matching is a smooth band from R to R, say G is smooth, 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 say C1, after a continuous function, it doesn't matter. I would like to know that at time t, u of xt is equal to G of x for almost every, almost every x you want. So, this is a, given a figure of time t here, I would like to find at time t whether u of x is achieved by g of x. This is a control problem. So that means that, but u of x is satisfied by a complex formula, therefore f prime inverse of x minus y of x t by t is equal to g of x. This is, this is the problem. And if suppose such a thing happens, then it turns out to be that u of x is given by this. Therefore, this must be equal to this. This is equal to saying that x minus y of x t by t is equal to f prime of g of x because f is a convex function f prime x. This, this is equal to saying that y of x t is equal to x minus t times f prime of g of x. So again, you can uh, write down y of x in terms of this x and g of x. Okay. Now comes the question. Suppose the optimal control problem is the solution. Sorry, op not optimal. Suppose the control problem is the solution. Then it must satisfy that f prime of u of x minus y of x t is equal to g of x, or y of x t is equal to x minus t times f prime of g of x. <laughs> but uh, lax only formula says that y of x t, this is sorry, y of x t, right? This is as a function of x, x going to y of x t is a monotone function. It's a non-decreasing, non-decreasing function. That means that this must be a non-decreasing function. Therefore, if at all the solution exists, the optimal for the control problem, this must necessarily be a non, uh, non decreasing function. That is, x going to x minus t times f prime of g of x must be a non decreasing function. Non -decreasing function. So, this is a uh, uh, condition which you get it. So, therefore, in general, the control problem may, have, may not have a solution. Suppose that is not the continuous function. Sorry, suppose it is not a monotone function, a monotone increasing function, then you don't have a solution for the control problem. Is it clear? Therefore, if it is not a control problem, then uh, this problem has no solution. Therefore, you must go for optimal control. So, how close it is to the given uh, thing and what is the minimizer? So, you, uh, if you don't have it, if x going to x minus t times f prime of gx is not a monotone function, is not a monotone function, then you can talk about integral of u of x t minus g of x optimal control gx minus f of x. Then there's infimum over that. Because given u naught, I can find a u of x t, where the infimum of that is uh, whether this problem would be the solution or not. This, so this is a, a optimal control problem. So control problem, you get it. Okay. Now, the, so
So uh, I'd like to give a history of the problem. Why this is important? It has got a lot of obligations which I'm not going to talk about. But it was first uh, tackled by Zuozo, Castro, Zuozo, and Palacio, or the three authors. They, they uh, told us this problem has been the solution, optimal control problem of this solution. Their excess is U0, that is fairly easy to obtain. Their excess is U0 satisfies that the minimum minimizer exists. The optimal control problem has a solution. And they devise an algorithm. Okay, once you get an optimal, in fact, you can have many optimal controls. There are many data, U0, U1, I mean, U0 can, may not be unique. There may be many data which give you the same uh, optimal control. So now capture at least one of them. How do you capture it? See, this is a mathematician said that, oh, I'll get the one solution, fine. Then it ends. So the uh, engineers or physicists said, okay, once you get a solution, you would like to see how the solution looks like. What is the, how do you capture it? So that means you must, you know, you cannot get, really get, capture the solution. At least you can get, um, uh, uh, numerically can you get it? Okay, therefore they must devise a scheme in which you have to capture it. So what is the numerical scheme that you can devise it? So they propose a scheme called alternating descent method to capture that because I'm going to talk about it because the solution in general may not be continuous. They, I admit the discontinuous, the discontinuous are called the shock. To capture the shocks, etc., is quite hard. So because of the shocks, etc., the alternating descent method, they claim that it may be possible to go uh, convergence of that uh, scheme, convergence to the optimal solution, which is still an open problem even today. But question is that, is it a optimal solution or the convergence, but it is an open problem. So what, uh, what I'm going to uh, look, okay, look at it in a different way and try to show that you do get an optimal uh, solution and you can capture it. So this is uh, completely different from what Zuozo and uh, uh, Zuozo et al. and uh, others capture. So let me talk about it. That is, it is a giant first with uh, uh, Chan and Gordon. To get the optimal solution. So anyhow, I have got another 15 minutes. So let us, uh, for the timing, I existence is uh, assumed that it is possible to solve it. Now I would like to go for the discontinuous function. So I've got another half an hour time. Let me. Go back to the discontinuous function and then combine both the things to get uh, uh, this control and optimal control. So, what is the discontinuous, discontinuous flux uh, conservation problem? So, discontinuous. So now look at it. Again, look at the consideration now. You look at du by dt plus f of ux. So let us write down that. Px of f of u. Let us write down this. x belongs to r and p positive. And you would like to solve this equation u of x0 is equal to u naught. All of you heard about. Uh, Weierstrass theorem. Weierstrass theorem says that every polynomial is dense in uh, uh, polynomials. Uh, polynomials are dense in the continuous function uh, in zero C of zero one continuous function. How does one prove it? He uses the heat equation. Okay, original proof. There are many uh, proofs. Are there? One is by uh, what is it? Uh, uh, one is by Strawberry theorem. Another is by uh, I forgot on that. Uh, I uh, see C of zero one. They are denote the polynomials in C of zero one. Polynomials in C of zero one is uh, dense theory. Bernstein polynomial. Thank you. So there's one by Bernstein polynomial and another by Bolzano. Uh, sorry, Stromberg structure. What about proof of Stromberg structure? How does we prove that? Okay, that is by what is known as heat equation. You solve the heat equation, convolve with the given function, and show that that is actually Solution uh, as a uh, time uh, converges to zero, it uh, boils down to the solution to this equation, and that is how the uh, waves are proved it. So, let us use the waves of theorem. So, what is that? It is a uh, uh, waves of theorem. I said that the 
So he's looking for it. Uh, solution, not this equation, with the viscous burgers equation, you expect as a tonic policy. You look at the solution to this equation. This is called a this is heat equation. If your Q is equal to zero, plus is zero. The your Q is not equal to zero, you consider this. This is a problem which is considered. And in fact, here you can relax the condition that F U is equal to uh, instead of F U, relax this condition by F O S is a function of X comma T comma U. Also three variables. So you have to put some condition. What is the condition? Condition that as a function of X and as a function of U, there are Lipschitz continuous functions. So locally Lipschitz continuous functions are also fine because U square by two is a locally Lipschitz continuous function. It is not a globally Lipschitz continuous function. Therefore, you uh, assume that they are locally Lipschitz continuous functions. Then uh, Kruskov, the very famous paper of Kruskov, Kruskov wrote that this problem admits a solution. This denoted by U epsilon and is unique. And as epsilon tends to zero, it is a singular uh, perturbation problem. As epsilon tends to zero, this goes to zero. So where does it converge? It converges to, we can show that U epsilon converges to U in, not in, uh, you will get a smooth solution, C1 or C2, you will get it, but it converges in L1 block. This is very important. It converges in L1 block solution. Where does U, L1 function, where U satisfies, U satisfies this equation, du by dt equal to, uh, plus df by dx of f of u equal to 0, f x equal to u naught. So this is what, and then you obtain what is known as an entropy condition. And he showed that the solution which he obtained is actually a unique solution. This is a very famous uh, doubling, uh, very well method of cross count, which I'm not going to uh, enter into the picture. So what I have to say that u turns to be a unique solution. This is how uh, he solved it. No, what is the condition here? Condition is that as a function of x and as a function of u, they are locally Lipschitz. Suppose you drop the condition of local Lipschitz. What can you say about it? One simple example is that suppose f is a function of two variables, x comma t comma u is a function of just f of x. So as a function of x, it is not locally Lipschitz. As a function of u, it is locally Lipschitz. So what is the simplest one you can talk about? It has a jump discontinuity. X can have a jump. So assume that x has a jump discontinuity. This function has a simple one discontinuity, one jump discontinuity. At x is equal to zero. That is, it has a uh, one jump discontinuity. That is, f of zero plus u and f of zero minus u does not. Uh, uh, they are uh, zero plus uh, f of zero plus u and f of zero minus u. They may not. They may not be equal. And that, uh, that is where the jump discontinuity comes. So simplest one is that f of x is equal to let us say f of uh, uh, I call this f of x u, f of x u is on the form, let us write down, so it's called f of u, if x u is positive, g of u, if x u is negative. This is an R, I can write it as f of x u, can determine uh, the heavyside function h x into f of u, plus 1 minus h x into g of u. So, therefore the problem is, it means, the, therefore the problem is to be, I'll write down. Problem turns out to be uh, du by dt. Suppose you re replace this by this du by dt, d by dx of f of u equal to 0, du by dt plus d by dx of f of u equal to 0. This is on the range on the equal x positive and t positive. This is in the range x negative and positive. And it's 0. So this was, this is the equation t. This is one consideration now, ut plus f of ux equal to 0 for the x positive. The another consideration now, ut plus g of ux equal to 0, x negative. So you would like to solve such a range equation. So why did you? Is there any conditional epsilon? So that epsilon, no, no, there is no conditional. Zero. This is where the epsilon is. This is where the this of epsilon. Okay. This. What is it? Here. Hello. 
put to the right side, you'll get f of u is equal to zero. And left hand side, g of u is equal to zero. I mean, du by dat is. Yes. No, no, I'm not talking about. I'm talking about now. This one. Du by dt plus uh, now by f is equal to f of x u. Is it okay? So I'm not not talking about the uh, viscous uh, equation. I'm looking for the non uh, non viscous equation with that uh, two fluxes f u and g u. Is it okay? Yes. So uh, why this equation is important? The first thing you would like to know. So it is uh, coming from uh, it, it has its own uh, story. It is coming from what is the oil industry. Oil is inside the earth. You would like to extract the oil from the earth. How do you extract? There are many methods of doing it. The simplest one is that you pump the water inside the uh, uh, inside the you drill it. First, you find out some uh, some means that oil is inside the earth. Then you pump it. Uh, then you drill it. You pump the water. So oil is uh, uh, in between the rocks. Once you pump it, because of the difference in the density, oil will come up. So you pump and uh, you drill under the hole. The oil will come out from the other hole. The equation that satisfies is precisely of the equation of this kind. I am not going to uh, work out how, how it uh, can, but you can show that uh, F U represents the uh, say oil and uh, G U represents the water from the present. Okay, flux corresponding to that. So it is a uh, uh, difference of two uh, discontinuous flux, two convex fluxes, but it has a discontinuous. Okay? So it is important, and they propose the scheme. The engineer. They proposed this scheme way back in 1930s. They proposed a scheme called uh, some scheme. For that, they without any proofs or anything, they proposed this uh, numerical scheme. They used that numerical scheme to uh, verify how much water, how much oil they can extract from the ground, and they are uh, very uh, satisfied with that. Now the question is, uh, how do you justify the scheme is well defined or uh, convergence etc. So it is a very big open problem. From last 30 years, people have been working on it. So the natural thing is that you regularize it. So what is the regularization? Hx is a function. Hx is equal to 1 here. This is Hx is equal to 1 here and 0 here. So you regularize it. So I call this system H epsilon, 1 minus H epsilon. Therefore, it will make a regular function. I can, I can talk about H epsilon. So I'll let me write down. I can talk about du by dt plus d by dx of f of uh, f epsilon of x u is equal to epsilon times u x x or something like that and x x u of x zero is equal to u naught. By Kruskov theory, because epsilon as a function of x and g, it is a so Lipschitz continuous function. Therefore, it is a smooth function. Therefore, this problem would be a solution by Kruskov theory. Now, you'd like to know that as epsilon tends to zero, what happens? Now, the question is that as epsilon tends to zero. What happens whether it comes to this solution or not? The, that was the question which uh, people are asking. Now, unfortunately, it is not. I'll give an example. Uh, I'll give an example. Assume that your f is like this. f of u, g of g is like this. Suppose it has a, uh, this is a, I call this theta g, the minimum f and g are convex function, theta f. The minimum of f and g. Look at it. Then let c be the point of intersection. Let c be the point of intersection of f and g. Okay. So now I would like to take u naught to be equal to u naught of x to be equal to c. So now you you get that uh, solution u of x t is equal to c. U of x t is equal to c is a solution to this problem. And also when you use the regularization, it turns out that C u of x is identically equal to C is the solution to this problem. Okay. But unfortunately, what happens is that f prime of C, f prime of C is what happens to this? It is positive. G prime of C is negative. So this uh, does not come in the uh, category of what is known as a, it's called an under compressive wave, it does not fall in the category of uh, uh, lax solenic uh, hypothesis. All the solutions must be. Uh, uh, not under compressive, compressive or uh, this one. This sort of uh, solution will not be allowed in the, from the classical theory. Therefore, there is a discrepancy. And what you get is that as a regularization, you get this solution, this solution, which is not allowed, which is not allowed because you cannot have a 
continuous solution across the disk uh, across the interface across the interface so here i forgot to tell you one more thing that not only that uh, across the interface uh, is that u plus of zero uh, t g of u of zero minus t sorry u of zero plus t what is that is that suppose this is a u of x t therefore u of zero minus t the left limit u of zero plus t the right limit if they assume that both exist then because it is a solution to a weak, weak solution to the problem it answers that these two are one and same so this is the actual problem of the one so here it satisfies that because therefore because that is that the c is a point of intersection therefore it is a solution to this problem but it does not represent the solution which is used by uh, all these things, for example so therefore the, uh, the the regularization will not is uh, effective one. This, this has been used by the lot of mathematicians so this uh, there is no other option either uh, you have given a equation either you regularize it if you don't regularize it you throw it so you regularize it and see whether it works or not if it doesn't work they don't know how to go about it is it clear so therefore this method will not work because the solution which they work at is not the solution given by the oil engineers therefore how do you go about it so you observe that this is a simply it is a theta regularization that is the solution which you get for every epsilon comes out this uh, theta solution so what you do is that you look for solution so that means that you look for instead of this you look for another solution you convert this into a this is where the lax solonic come in lax solonic this is half this is uh, due to kuskov so now you use a lax solonic that means you convert this problem into hamilton jacobi well, when you convert this problem into hamilton jacobi again you get the discontinuous hamilton jacobi equation Okay, is it okay? So I'll I'll write down that. So the problem comes to this problem. This can be a sum becomes d b by d t plus d by d x of other. Uh, f of dv by dx equal to zero for x positive and t positive is discontinuous. So dv by dv by dt plus uh, g of dv by dx equal to zero for x negative and t positive. And I want this to be v is the least discontinuous, v is the least discontinuous, both x and t. And I want that v at x zero is equal to v not of x v not of x is given to put integral zero to x u not of theta u not is one so you convert the problem from a discontinuous discontinuous conservation law into the discontinuous hamilton jacobi equation again you are making your life complicated how do you solve such a problem so we have a formula the formula is that uh, v of x is defined v of x this is the definition i mean you can derive it i'll write down in the mom of This is where the I'll write down, and I'll explain it. Gamma plus gamma of x t. I'll write down, and I'll tell you we have gamma of zero plus integral of gamma positive plus star prime of gamma dot d theta plus gamma negative g star of gamma dot d theta plus uh, measure of gamma is equal to zero. Measure of zero is minimum of And write on what is what is gamma of x t? Gamma of x t are the control constant. Earlier we get the straight line. Now I'll get I don't get the straight line. I'll get what are known as the control constant. So what is gamma of x t? Gamma of x t turns out to be. I'll write on that. So gamma of x t turns out to be. I'll write down here. Take a fixed point x comma t. Fixed point x comma t. Look at the gamma of x t consists of all the curves. Either it is a straight line, like this, 
or it is a straight line and go like this or it is a straight line passes through that and again going like this or it is a straight line passing through that and like this this was the four sir all these curves they are called the control curves now it minimizes over this control curve of this quantity okay and then it turns out that b is turns out that uh, v turns out the lichis continuous function and the derivative then du u is u of x t is equal to t by dx turns out to be the solution for this discontinuous flux okay this is how you can get it and what is the solution you get so is it okay i'll, I'll just write out that solution and then i'll talk about the control problem So what is the solution? Now solution is given. So I'll give you one simple example. So solution is I want to solve this equation u t plus f of u x equal to zero. U t plus g of u x equal to zero. Okay. Then uh, so let us take uh, uh, let us take this one. So let us take uh, f is like this, g is like this. And C is the point of intersection here. C is the point of intersection. Earlier, when u naught is equal to C, u naught is equal to C. C, the solution turns out to be u naught is equal to C itself is the solution, which we don't want it. What happens in the case of in the from the uh, Hamilton Jacobi equation? It turns out that the solution becomes this is a C, this is theta g. Call this is theta g here. The minimum of this one. This is the theta f with the Minimum of f, we call this theta g bar. The way it in the, comes and measures it. What you do is that you go from c. This is c. Go from here to here. G prime inverse of x by t, and u is equal to c. It turns out we this is a solution to the equation. So that, that is that's the this problem. And when it comes to the right hand side, you Shift from here to here, you will get that. You shift from here to here, you get a shock u is equal to theta g bar, and u is equal to. Sorry, you shift from theta g bar to this one, u is equal to c here, f prime inverse of x. Look at this is a f prime inverse g prime. They are convex functions. They make sense, and you can show that this is a solution to the equation u t plus. Uh, Uh, f of u x equal to zero, uh, to the left or right side. U t plus g of u x equal to zero to the right side. U at uh, in sphere condition is equal to c. Okay, and that is what I'm going. I'm going from here to here, then go jump and then go from here. And at zero, g prime zero is equal to f prime zero is equal to theta g bar. It satisfies the and uh, on the interface it satisfies the interface. I mean interface condition. That's why it is a solution which is different from. Use a, which is different from this solution. U of x is different from c. So in these lines, it is fine, but here it differs. So that means that, and also you can show that uh, that this is the solution, which the engineer solution for the oil. Okay. So once uh, you can uh, obtain the solution like this. So now you can look for this is a uh, work with uh, with Gauda. Now look for uh, now optimal control. What is optimal control? Again, uh, our control and optimal control. That is for any. Now look for an equation. Now I am interested in solving this equation. Yes, I am interested in solving this equation. Uh, DTU plus uh, DX f of u equal to zero. DTU plus DX d of u equal to zero. But x positive and x negative and t positive. And uh, comma u of zero uh, plus t is equal to u of zero minus t. We know that this problem was at base. Of course, uniqueness is still a open problem here. And you uh, like to uh, yes, t positive, t positive. And u is a solution coming from the Hamilton Jacobi. You look for the solution coming from the Hamilton Jacobi. Now we look for then uh, once you look for the solution u of x t is a solution coming from Hamilton Jacobi. Now, question now. Uh, then we'll ask for the control problem. What is the control problem? The control problem is that 
again you take look at the discontinuous term at time t you are given and you are given a function h of x h is a function from r to r function from r to r now question is that does there exist a data u not belongs to any t as such that u of x t the solution u of x t at time t is given to this is called the for almost every for almost every this is called control problem okay now the question is whether the control problem is the solution or not okay so now, now that means that uh, that it has a, a lax solenic formula you can show that this has a kind of lax solenic formula because of the lax solenic formula it has got some constraint therefore for, for every function g you cannot find a u not solid q of x is equal to g of x like in the previous situation therefore you would like to know or what is the restriction which you get so you can show that by the this paper you can show that it satisfies the lax solenic type of formula called the lax solenic type formula formula and now you can show that in general for all g for all h you cannot sorry here it h and time it is h of x for all h you cannot get it because it must satisfy some compatibility condition like when f is equal to g it is not so so we got the solution some 5 6 years back and found it for the so uh, it was rejected so and it took almost 6 years to complete what is the flaw in that there is one point was missing i'll explain it in another 5 minutes and now it's got accepted so control problem has no solution so you go for the optimal control problem so that means optimal control problem. what is optimal control what is the fast function corresponding to this one okay so what is the cost function corresponding to this let us write down Write down and then. So I'm interested in solving. Uh, no, I have got a solution. U t plus f of u x equal to zero for x positive and t positive. U t plus g of u x equal to zero. It is coming from Hamilton's equation. X negative f of zero plus t f of u of zero plus t is equal to g of u of zero minus t. This is one. And u of u of x zero is equal to u dot x. Assume that I can without assumption say I can assume that f of x star zero is the greater than g star zero. This is equal to saying that g of theta g. We can write down this is the greater than f of theta. Therefore, the uh, my fluxes f and g looks like this. This is like this. This is like this. This is theta f minimum. This is the minimum of g theta g plus g theta g. There, g of theta g is greater than theta f. Then you can show that. Uh, because of the Laxonic formula, okay. Now what happens is that I just uh, describe it and I say because u is given by u is given by dv by dx, where v is the solution for the obtained via the discontinuous Hamilton-Jacobi equation. Okay, that we already done that. Now how does it look like? Now this is the axis. This is x-axis. This is the equation u t plus f of x. So here, here u t plus g of x x zero here. So now what happens is that at the, this is a point, uh, this is a t, this is a point x comma t. You can show that, and um, actually under this condition, you can show that there exists an R one t, there exists an R two t. I'll write down that there exists a curve. Uh, they, uh, let me write down. So here it becomes a purely Hamilton-Jacobi equation, like Laxon. Here it is Laxon. Right? This is denoted by theta. This is theta g bar. This is theta g double bar. 
the positive part of uh, f prime and the negative part of f prime. Okay, you can show that in this region the solution turns out to be. This region, the solution transfer to be theta t bar. Here it is something given by Laxell rate, here given by Laxell rate. So that means that, so what you get is that the, you go integrate it from here to here. There's a non decreasing function. So there exists a non decreasing function. Y from minus infinity to R to D. These are all exit continuous functions from R1 to D to infinity. This is up to from here to here, non decreasing function. From here to here, the non decreasing function. Satisfying the following non decreasing function. So that here, the non decreasing function basically satisfies the maximum expected formula. Now that is here, what happens is that it is the particular of xt is given by f prime inverse of uh, x minus y of xt. This is part. Here it gives like u t, so u of x t, here by g prime inverse of x minus y of x t, by t, something like this it happens. And here, in different happens. So when you write down the uh, 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 optimal, control, optimal control program becomes, I'm not going to optimal control. Problem is that. Now, uh, integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity, you will get, okay, you write down x minus y of xt by t minus g of x, the whole square dx, from you integrate from here to here, then integrate from here to here, the integral 0 to infinity, sorry, r1 t to infinity x minus y of x t by t minus g of x to whole square dx plus here it turns out to be theta g bar you get that from r2 to r2 t to r1 t sorry r2 t to r1 t theta g bar minus g of x to whole square dx plus something here which i'll write here it doesn't matter it is uh, basically uh, the reflection uh, calculus is something you get. This turns out to be the cost function. This turns out to be the cost function. Yeah. This turns out to be the cost function. So you minimize this integral and we show that this integral, the minimized uh, infimum will take it. The infimum turns out to be minimum. Minimum exists and you can capture that minimum. Okay. So, so there it involves two types of uh, arguments. One is the existence of a minimizer that is fairly easy to obtain it. But capturing the minimizer, that requires that took almost to five, five, six years to get that result. Uh, that requires an extra condition. Once you put that extra condition, you can capture the minimizer and you can write down exactly the, what the uh, optimal control for this problem. So I think I'll stop it. Thanks for the The last equation I had. Yeah. 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 There's a function of the. Why is it not there on the right hand side? No, u not depending on the. Uh, you, so by xt. Use, uh, you want to. So you can write down u of xt, right? u of xt is given by x minus y of xt by t. This y not is depending on u, u not. Is there any question? One question, but yeah. I already answered. Uh, I already asked is the regularization is the only approach for this kind of What is it? Uh, regularization is the only way that you said. No, regularization, there are many ways of regularization. Yeah, I would like to know. Okay. See, for regular, take the Kuskov uh, regularization. X is equal to epsilon e x. Okay, this is what regularization. Why do you want to take epsilon? I can put something else. Epsilon is x plus delta u3 triple n or u4x. Okay, this is another regularization. What happens as epsilon and delta goes to zero? You don't get the Kuskov solution. 
and then you get something different. Okay, therefore it's all depending on what visualization you look at it. You follow? So here also you can have one visualization which you, which is all the mathematicians were doing it for the last uh, 30 years. It was not working. So that is a uh, regularizing the heavyweight function in many ways. Try to get it, but finally the constant is a solution which is not okay. Okay, constant because uh, when the data is constant, what you get is a non-constant solution because of the interface condition. That is what happens here in the oil industry. So that is uh, in order to capture it, yes, you can uh, look at it. The Hamilton Jacobi method of regularization, which is the C1 or the elliptic regularization, whereas the Kuskov is the C2 regularization. Okay. Uh, no. Once you get an optimal one, for that time, the capital T, you can get uh, uh, infinitely many data which uh, has the same uh, value at the time T is equal to. And how this No, this one, this one, no. It is one optimal control. Uh, one optimal control you can construct it, it's called a backward construction. Which I am not uh, because of the lack of time, I did explain it. Does it transfer to the inverse problem? It is inverse problem, exactly. It is inverse problem. We have plenty of solutions. This precise is inverse problem. You can put it in the language of inverse uh, problem also if you don't like uh, optimal control. Again, in the uh, Zuasa thing, you cannot capture. I mean, you can, there is no method of uh, getting a, uh, at least one solution, but here you can get. I mean, it is a, uh, uh, what they call is a, it is constructive method. So, how do you compute it? Is there any... Take it completely, because it is a, I didn't say that. It is a, you have a convex state in Hilbert space, and the projection exists, that is computable in L2 space. A convex state is contained in L2 space, that is projection. So that then that projection can be described, and you can compute it. I didn't go through that, how to compute uh, uh, optimal, optimal control. But it is purely a uh, convex, it is a linear. Even though the problem is non convex, non linear thing, you get it. But finally, the construction comes out to be linear construction. So it is just a uh, projection on the Hilbert space on a convex space. Yeah. It's very simple solution, right? Ah. Ah. They converge locally with convex, right? No, no, no. No, no. They converge only in uh, L1, but not in C, not even C0. No, 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 no way, no way. That is all. Uh, the in the VSR thing, this is not there. It converges locally uniformly. So polynomials that say the polynomials are dense in the space of all continuous functions and the zero C of zero one, which is not the case here. When f of u is not equal to zero, then it is not locally. It is converges. I mean, this is a beautiful theory of Kuskov. So this is a different. I like. Uh, Iconal equation, right? And iconal equation. Iconal equation is a. Uh, that is a C0, that is a Lipschitz uh, regularization. This is a C2 regularization. But there also we add some term regularized epsilon epsilon. You can apply the epsilon to CSX, but for the, the non discount, but if it is discontinuous, you cannot do that. Discontinuous Hamilton Jacobi equation is different from. Regular is Hamilton Jacobi equation. So you follow? Because of the F and G. Because of F and G, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, then anyone question? Hey, I'll give the reference for that. Yes. Those things. Is there some condition on F and G? No, I would like to say conditions F and G. F and G are any convex function. There's no relation between like no. compatibility condition is one. That's no, F and G are by increasing and go to infinity as the module test. Strictly increasing. They are independent, only compatibility conditions. Are only compatible. Suppose now the big open question suppose F and G are not convex. Suppose one is convex and is concave. Or F and G have different uh, uh, two humps. How do you go about it? Completely open. You got many solutions. This solution you would like to look at it completely open. So it is works only for the S and G convex function. There is no relation between here and this first two solutions. 
there is no relation when this cost to person because this is also an approach right? there is no relation between what this kind of solution <coughs> this one uh, for example in the when yes there is no yes and this only one is yes is there with the hamilton jacobi equation without the discount no hamilton jacobi can solve it only if uh, yes is coming uh, hamilton jacobi equation without the discontinuity so there is a viscosity solution right we regularize and exactly exactly right, right. Uh, so here so that approach cannot be applied it is you cannot it is one dimension also you must understand that it works only in one dimension the hamilton jacobi if you go to higher dimension it is no more uh, possible you cannot use the hamilton jacobi no Now, that's only the formula holds only in one dimension, and the then you can allow. Well, then it shows that the solution which they obtain to that whatever Lacson A is unique. That is a beautiful theory of one minute. Then Hoff proved that uh, David Hoff, not the uh, David Hoff, proved that the solution obtained from the uh, Kuskov method and the uh, obtained by Lacson A is one and the same. So it is a. It is not obvious. This explicit solution is different from Hoff Lake formula. That is that is also the what is it? That is also in R N right? Hoff Lake formula. Hoff Lake formula works only in R one. I think someone in R N. Ah, R N no, it doesn't work. In higher dimensions, uh, you cannot solve the conservation law through the Hamilton Jacobi subplate. Conservation law is subplate. I think I'm mixing the continuity and discontinuity. Right, right. No, even in the continuous situation, Hamilton Jacobi is different from the conservation law in higher dimensions. Okay, so you, you, there is no relation between Hamilton Jacobi and uh, conservation law. It works only for even in one dimension. The things are very difficult. What happens? Take the input input by some elementary uh, reference book. Reference the the best book is Ivan's book on PD, the third chapter of PD. He does, uh, but no uh, no uh, discontinuous. Yes. Uh, for the discontinuous, there, is, there are many papers. There are no books available. There are many papers I can give the reference. So, optimal control is something. Optimal control for the uh, conservation law is completely open. Nothing is known. For the uh, uh, non-conservation law, there are a lot of papers, a lot of work is going on. But in this case, very few papers are there. Optimal control and optimal control because uh, linear regression will not work for us. The return method will not work. There are a lot of uh, I mean, completely different uh, nature. Are there any more questions? If you have not the case, yes, thank all. Yes, yes. 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 all good. Uh, can we consider this particular problem as some kind of generalization of the nice material derivative theory? So, material equation, I think that material derivative is actually what that's what the uh, things are becoming complicated. U dot grad U is a material derivative. I am keeping that material derivative as it is here. U into du by dx. I am not as already material derivative because I will give a very simple uh, example. So look at this equation, the linear equation. So this linear equation, du by dt, one dimension from a times du by dt. Is what is the solution to this equation? So the solution u of x t by the method of calculus. Consider the equation of traveling wave x minus k t. Right here, the material derivative is uh, constant. U dot radio and the radio instead of u square by two, I will take it a can be u by dx. A can be equal to zero. Okay, then you can write down the solution. It is just a traveling wave x minus k t. And that's why you have the solution. What is the solution? At time t, I want time t u of x comma t is equal to some h of x. This is what a uh, control problem is. So this, but u of x is given by that u naught of x minus a t, a k, okay, h of x. So all this. So that means uh, uh, hey, uh, that's why u naught, u naught of x control is equal to h of x plus a. H is given. That we can find out you know. Therefore, a control problem has a solution. This is much easier. It is a priori. We can write down explicitly by hand. So can we consider this case? Let's say 
Uh, yes, it is a general assertion, but you cannot write, you cannot do that. Okay, you can uh, control and optimal control problem is a trivialty. It is a you can always write down the hand how what is the control, but you cannot do that in the case of uh, uh, Burgers equation, for example. That is what Zozo considered. Okay, and he was not able to get the uh, uh, existence is clear. Mathematically, you can do that, but capturing is was not clear. Here, you can both give existence and capture. Okay, so material related corresponds to this. Any more questions? It's not the best time to give up to this. On behalf of the organization, I also want to make this seminar. I like, first of all, I like to thank colleagues, Ram for inviting me. And I also thank for our IT team people for conducting this very smoothly. And also I thank our professor uh, Kandan for supporting us to do this kind of activities. And I also a yes, sorry to the, all the Zoom participants for we are not able to make this thing very uh, convenient for them, and they are not able to ask questions. So in our future uh, talks, we'll try on level just to improve this thing. So thank you everybody for participating. Okay, and also I also extend my thanks to Professor Sadamati for visiting us, and we'll be very happy to visit in future for longer time in this course here. So thank you very much. Let's thank you. Yeah, the refreshment is you can have a little bit. Exactly. Yes. So anything that I want to give a reference to that. Yes. So just references, and uh, I'll just give a paper. And, uh, yeah, one more thing is there, there will be a group photo, so okay. don't go away. So outside there will be a group photo. Reference is just record. This is a reference and you can look into the uh, references given.